Waves are big, strong, and show no mercy. But one vessel learnt this the hard way. Today we are exploring the fascinating story of the SS America. From the flagship of the United States lines to one of the most iconic shipwrecks in history. Let's explore the story of the SS America. SS America was designed by William Francis Gibbs, which is a name that I'm sure will be familiar to a lot of you. She was laid down on, a, on the 22nd of August 1938. At the time, it was one of the few ocean liners to have its interiors designed entirely by women, as it was traditionally the women who, who made the travel arrangements, appealing to them more. America was launched on the 31st of August 1939, and America was originally designed to have low funnels in order to give the, f the ship a modern, streamlined appearance. But it was later discovered that on our sea trials, heavy soot was being deposited on the decks, resulting in the funnels needing to be extended by about 16 feet. It was originally thought that the modern fins on the funnels would push the smoke upwards and away from the decks, but it was proved ineffective at the funnel's original height. Other than that mishap, the trials went off without a hitch and she was ready for her maiden voyage. It's the 22nd of August, 1940, and it's SS America's maiden voyage. A cruise to the Caribbean with some seven, 775 passengers on board. Now, some of you may be questioning why is she going on a cruise? She's an ocean liner. Well, a couple years earlier, some guy in Germany with a moustache decided to invade Poland, plunging the world into the blood bloodiest conflict in history. So, the United States lines didn't want to risk her flagship by sending her into a war zone. So, for the beginning of her career, she was to be a cruise ship. For some reason though, during her cruising days, a giant print of the side reading the words United States lines. But almost everyone, including me, thinks that this was just added to deter any potential threats from the Axis powers, as America was not at war yet. About a year later, SS America was acquired by the Navy on the 1st of June 1941 to be used as a troop transport. The ship was renamed the USS West Point. Even though America was still not at war, they were starting to get very worried. Some notable changes were made to her during her conversion was the addition of life rafts covering the promenade deck windows. And inside, bunks could be found everywhere, and several anti-aircraft weapons were installed. All of, the we all of the windows were covered, the ship was painted in a camouflage grey colour, and the troop carrying capacity was increased to 7,000 approximately. During the war, she had a fair share of minor accidents and close calls, including a near miss when she visited Singapore. Japanese aircraft bombed everything around her and managed to escape by the skin of her teeth. Close to the end of, a war of the war, another notable event was that during one of her voyages in the Indian Ocean, a baby was born, named West Point Leslie Sheldrake, named after the ship if you couldn't tell. The USS West Point was decommissioned on the 22nd of February 1949, ending a somewhat uneventful wartime service. The states which I introduced a few years later, she was to take much of America's glory, such as the flagship of the line. After 1955, she continued to sail the US Europe route and the occasional cruise through the early 60s to tropical destinations like Bermuda. Shortly after this, though, this would be the end of the line for the SS America, and in 1964 was purchased by the, the Chandras line. She was dressed in a sleek white hull and some weird X's on the funnels, renamed to the SS Australis. The post-war immigrant run from Europe to Australia had become a lucrative market for passenger ships at the time, with the Chandras adding capacity for an approximately extra thousand people. She was also a very popular choice for tourists wanting a holiday, and was deeply adored by her passengers. On the 22nd of October, 1970, 
A fire broke out in the galley, causing air conditioning supply units and exhaust systems to be cut off from the bridge. It was extinguished the following day, but the voyage was delayed due to repair work. On the 11th of July, 1974, Australis was involved in a minor collision with the Australian aircraft carrier HMAS Melbourne while in Sydney Harbour. Both ships were slightly damaged, but there was no fatalities, so that's always a thumbs up. Rising fuel costs and ageing infrastructure caused Chandras to pull Australis off the Australian run in 1978. During her last few years, she was pretty much a rust bucket, and wasn't maintained, as it was assumed by the cruise line that she would be scrapped. But shortly later, they were proved very wrong. Australis was sold to Venture Cruise Lines, and under this new ownership, the ship was renamed America once again, in an attempt to capitalise on its American heritage but this time being registered to Panama for some reason. The ship's hull was painted dark blue, and the funnels were repainted in a blue and red colour scheme. And that's pretty much about it. America set sail on our first cruise on the 30th of June, 1978. The ship was in an extremely bad condition, with piles of soiled linen, worn mattresses, and scattered piles of trash everywhere together with the horrific smell of sewage. To top it all off, on her first Venture Cruises voyage, she was overbooked. A number of passengers mutinied, forcing the captain to return to New York, having only passed the Statue of Liberty. A second cruise also went ahead, but yet again the passengers mutinied and shortly after the company went under, and America was put up for auction. Shockingly though, she was actually repurchased by the Chandras line, and renamed Italis. Her forward dummy funnel had become severely corroded due to years of neglect. However, even after all of these changes she proved very unpopular and outdated, and eventually laid up in September 1979. The ship was yet again sold in 1980 to another company, and was renamed Noga. Their intention was to convert the ship into a prison ship, and to be anchored in Beirut. But this never happened. In September 1984, the ship was sold to Silver Moon Ferries, and was once again renamed to Alverdos. While under the ownership of Silver Moon Ferries, a burst bilge pipe led to flooding the engine room. But luckily she was in shallow water, after she was pumped out and repaired. In the late 1980s, the ship was sold for $2 million for scrapping. The scrapyard began, began work, following the demolition of lifeboats and lifeboat davits. The scrappers pulled out, being refitted to become a five-star hotel ship in Thailand. Despite the years of neglect, the hull was still in remarkably good condition and in August 1993, it was renamed American Star. Since the vessel was not allowed to pass through the Suez Canal due to its age, the vessel had to go the long journey around the Cape of Good Hope in order to get to Thailand. The ship left Greece under tow on the 22nd of December 1993, but the tow proved impossible due to the terrible weather. It then returned to Greece for a few days, until the weather calmed down. On the 31st of December 1993, American Star left Greece for the last time, under tow by a Ukrainian tugboat. Shortly after, American Star sailed into a thunderstorm in the middle of the Atlantic. The tow lines broke, and six or more crew members were sent aboard the American Star to try to reattach the emergency tow lines, which eventually proved unsuccessful. Two other tow lines were called to assist, but on the 17th of January 1994, the crew aboard American Star was rescued by helicopter, and the ship was left adrift. At quarter past 6 a.m. on the 18th of January, the ship went aground off the west coast of Fort Aventura 
on the Canary Islands. While the owners decided what to do with her, the ship was left to nature. Within the first 48 hours of grounding, the pounding waves of the Atlantic broke the ship in two, just past the second funnel. The ship was declared a total loss. On the CERN section, shortly after, it collapsed and sank in 1996. But fortunately, the bow section remained intact. As months passed after running ashore, the wreck attached onlookers and even looters. Locals even created a zipline to the wreck to carry off anything valuable from it. But due to the rough waves and strong current, trying to reach the wreck was very, very unsafe. And over the years, several people unfortunately died trying to swim out to the wreck. And others had to be airlifted off once they got on board. Sadly, by 2007, the bow section had collapsed. And by 2018, only a small section of the bow is visible during high tides. And as of 2022, she is gone. Well, I really want to thank everyone very much for watching, and I will see you in the next video.